So let's get started with the exercises. So uh, I will show how to, to get the first part of the first exercise done in Tiny Tunes. Uh, we will look at the Hello World, um, the Hello World uh, part uh, of this as assignment or this exercise. So first off, I've, I've done the preparations. Please have a look at getting started the getting started guide with exercises uh, before this one. But now we will start. Uh, working with the assignment. So we got our Tiny Tunes library or folder created. I'm inside the Tiny Tunes, so if I go up one step, you will see that this is the exercise library. We go to Tiny Tunes uh, and we can do an npn start. I've already done the npn install. Uh, so this will start the development environment. Uh, it will build the project and we will be able to see it if we go to. Uh, uh, local host 4000. So here is the uh, uh, the page and the first exercise is write some JavaScript code that creates a text node containing the text hello world and puts this node into the p element with the id step 0 underscore hello. Um, so in this case we need to be able to create a text or create a text node. We will be uh, need to be able to to like get a reference to the p element that has the id step 01 and we need to be able to put the text node inside of that p element. Uh, so you to be able to do this you should have either looked at the reading up here or watched the lecture where we talk about the DOM for instance. Uh, okay so first of all we could start an inspector uh, inside of Tiny Tunes. Uh, or inside of the browser. Uh, this one is good to have. Um, maybe we could like arrange this better. Uh, something like that, I guess. Could we also have it to the right, maybe? Like almost like that. Okay, so 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 having a look in in, in the inspector and going to the the exercise, we will find that uh, we have this. Uh, it's really laggy when I'm recording. So this is the the text, and under that one we have the step zero one hello. So it's in this p tag we need to add our element. So let's go to to. Uh, we should do code and look in our exercise library. We have the source library. Uh, we have the index.html, and we will find the same uh, uh, same code here. Um, and we also have the JS uh, folder with the app.js, and this one is just a hello world. Uh, we could actually, I think, we could remove the use strict. We could save. You can see that this will rebuild the application. Uh, we have standard.js installed, so if I write a semicolon, for instance, this one will be um, uh, uh, underlined. But if I save. Uh, Wisher Studio will remove the semicolon, the comp compiler will not find the error in this case. However, if I were to do something like if, uh, say, i equals zero with two equal signs uh, and, and save, uh, this will not be resolved because uh, the browser or Wisher Studio cannot determine if it's safe to, to, to change this to three equal signs that is uh, recording to standard. But if I do it manually, the error will disappear. And I, of course, isn't defined in this case. So get an error for that as well. OK. Save. Going back to the browser, uh, you will see that this one says hello. Uh, if we change it to four exclam exclamation marks, uh, and go back to, you will see that it has changed. So we will have a reload in this case. Okay, let's get started. Uh, first step, we need to create a text node containing the text hello world. So I will start off by doing that in the app.js and we will later on uh, make sure that we, we put this in the module. So first of all, creating a text node. We do that by uh, creating something we could call it my text equals document uh, dot create text node and the text that we want to 
to, to save hello world. We have no tests, so we will not automatically detect if you write something wrong. In this case we were supposed to have one exclamation mark, so I will change it like that. Okay, so now we have created our text node, however we haven't added it to the document. To be able to add it to the document we need to find this, uh, I, uh, this text node with the id step 0 underscore hello and put it inside of the p node. So going back to the code to be able to find that tag we set let p tag equals document dot query selector. You could use if you like uh, uh, document get element by id. Uh, however uh, I would actually recommend always using query selector because that then you you, you got this CSS selectors you know how to write them uh, and you, 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 you don't need to know anything else than query selector actually. So, okay, we have uh, gotten our reference to the p tag. Now let's add the text to the p tag. So we take the p tag, dot uh, append child, put the my text inside of the p tag like that and save. Rebuilt, going back to the browser and you will see hello world has appeared and if we look inside of the div or the p tag we see that hello world is there great we actually solved the first piece of the puzzle now doing this like you could do like something like okay uh, this is exercise 01 and then you could like do this is and start your code over here however I would recommend trying to modulize this in, in, in some way um, so that we keep app.js to its bare minimum uh, in this case I will add a new file call it uh, let's see um, um, Exercises. Yeah, exercises.js for instance. Um, I will not. In in this case, I, I I really don't have have use for types or mod uh, uh, or classes or something like that. So this will be just a a JavaScript file with functions that will help me solve this exercise. Uh, and inside of this one, we could create our, ourselves a function. Call it. Uh, exercise 01 uh, and actually put our code for solving the first exercise inside of this one um, and save this one and it will fix it for us remove this code or those comments uh, and if we try to run this of course nothing will happen uh, you can even see that if I make a change in this file and save webpack will not rebuild and that is because this exercise.js is not used anywhere so webpack has no use for for building this file uh, the only file that will be rebuilt is the app.js so if i save this one you will see that webpack will recompile it however to be able to link those we can use uh, mpn modules or we could even use the uh, v3c standard modules in this case we will use the node modules uh, using exports and requires uh, so module dot export um, and i will uh, name this uh, or we could yeah, I will name it x01 and that equals x01 like that. Uh, so we will export this first exercise. Going into app we can do a const x01 equals uh, or exercise equals oh, ex, uh, exercise exercise equals uh, require Since this is a local file, we do a dot slash exercise. Exercises. I said exercises. Okay. Then we will name this exercises as well, like that. And we can do an exercises dot. Uh, did I do something wrong? Uh, module dot exports, right? Uh, exercises dot 
exercise 01 and we call that function like that. Save uh, and if, when we save you will see that it will build app.js and exercise.js and that is because now we have a dependency between app and exercises. Going back to the browser this is still working. Uh, uh, we could go into exercises we can add a debug debugger on that line uh, it will reload it will stop the debugger uh, in that file come on and we could have a look okay so we find my text what is that okay it says hello world in my text okay and you can inspect and and and, and debug your code as usual and that is because we have this source mapping going on in the background where the browser will actually know which files in the build.js file maps to which files in our local uh, environment. Uh, this is pretty much it for the first exercise. Of course you can modulize this in, in every way you like. In this case we could continue doing function x02 and we just make sure that we will uh, uh, export that that as as well. Uh, in, in, in this case, we could probably do something like module exports uh, equals uh, x01 instead, and uh, after that, well, x02 to be able to export all of those uh, in the same time. Uh, I did something and failed to compile. Uh, what did I do? Um, oh. oh, oh, of course, <laughs> I haven't completed the body of that function. <laughs> okay, it's an empty function, but it should work. Yeah, uh, it just complains on the debugger statement. Um, yeah, uh, and in this case we could just tell which functions we would like to export and continue working. But in this case, um, a good practice when you do exercises like this is this, this exercise is pretty well defined, so we have like how many? Uh, it's like Oh, it's so super laggy. We have like doo -doo -doo, nine exercises. Uh, I would recommend you doing one commit per exercise on these fairly small exercises. But as a good practice, make sure that you always do a commit after you solve a specific problem. So in this case, I've solved the problem. I could open a new terminal uh, window. So I have two, one is running in the background and this one I could use to, to do my, uh, my, my git command. So git add, um, well, I should have done a git status first, maybe git status, just to make sure that, okay, so we added app.js and exercise. So git commit uh, uh, solving first exercise. And now we can start working with the next one. So make good use of always uh, uh, committing your code after a certain problem. When the exercises grow you will like create a memory game for instance uh, and in that case you will need to do a lot of commits during the exercise. So okay I made the brick turn. Okay that's a good isolated problem then I might do an uh, got git commit and of course do a git push to, to github as well just to make sure that you have your changes saved uh, not only locally. Okay so good luck with this exercise. We, I will uh, I, I would recommend you to try to solve the exercise for your own but uh, if you're stuck you will see that I've recorded um, um, solve, solve s my solving for, for each and every one of those exercises as well. So you will find that on, on the course web page. Good luck.